My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, GMAT Review, the official guide, 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number. 277 and today is our lesson number 34. Please turn to page 277, number 27. Problem number 27. Let's take a look at it. It's a very straightforward question. They tell you that n is an, n is an integer and the question simply is is n even? 27 n is an integer is n even very simple very straightforward question and there are two ways we can go about this problem one is what I would call the traditional way the algebraic way the classical way the conventional way the geeky way the nerdy way the academic way if you like and the other one is what I would call uh, the non-traditional way. Which way should we do first? Let's do the non-traditional way first. Look, the question is, is n even? In the first statement, in the first statement they tell us that this quantity n squared minus 1 is, R, is an odd integer. They tell you, they tell us that uh, n squared minus 1 is an odd integer. Is that right? Number 27, I lost it. Yep, it's an odd integer. Now listen, n is an integer. We are told here, n is an integer. n being an integer, there are only two possibilities. n is either, n is either even or n is odd. That's all. That's what other possibilities are there. So we're going to try out both of them. Quantity that we have we have here is n squared minus one. N squared minus one. If it is even, if it is even, then this n squared part would represent even times even. But well, even times even is even. Two times four is two times four is eight. I mean, that's too simple. Obviously, I don't have to explain it. Even times even is even minus 1, even minus a 1, even number minus an odd number will end up giving an odd quantity. For example, 2 times 4, 2 times 4 is 8, and then minus a 1 becomes 7, which is an odd one. In other words, in other words, what we're trying to say here is that if, so this quantity, even times even, n squared, this is your n times n. If n happens to be if n happens to be even, then even times even is even, minus a 1 will give us an odd quantity. This quantity is going to be an odd one, which is exactly what they tell you here, which is exactly what, what you know. So there you go, n is even. The question here is not, the question point here is not that it turns out to be actually even. The point is we are able to tell whether one way or the other. We are able to tell whether it's even or odd, whether, whether it's even or not. It turns out that it's even. Here, here we're going to show that n could possibly not be odd. Watch what happens. We have the quantity here n squared minus 1. If n happened to be odd, then this n squared would have been odd times odd. That's your n times n. Odd times odd, 3 times 5 is 15. Odd times odd is odd. Now minus a 1, if you have an odd number, minus a 1, it becomes even odd number minus even number becomes even. So this entire quantity turns out to be even if n is odd. If n is odd, one more time, if n happens to be odd, then n squared would represent odd times odd. Odd times odd is odd. Odd times odd is odd. Minus 1 will become even. But we are told that this, this quantity, n squared minus 1, is, is odd, not even. So this is not the case. n is in fact even. Again, one more time, the point was not that it actually turned out to be even. The point is there is enough information in there 
for us to be able to tell one way or the other. This first statement works. First statement does enable us to answer the question is an even to which the answer would be either yes or no. And we are able to, we are in that position to make that uh, assessment whether it is even or odd. So first statement works. So here we go. A, D, B, C, E. Since the first statement by itself works, that tells us the answer cannot be B, C, or E. Let's look at second statement. Oh, should we do this? Uh, should we do the same same part in 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 a, in a more classical way, more traditional way, if you like? Let's do it in a more traditional way. Okay. Here's the algebraic way. So this is this is sort of a logical thinking. Now we're going to do the same exact thing with the algebra. Algebraically. If you are so inclined, we know that n squared minus 1 equals n plus 1 and n minus 1. n plus 1, of course, is an integer. And n minus 1, of course, is an integer. So we have a product of two integers, and we are told that the product of two integers is odd. We are told that this is odd. How can that be possible? Product of two integers is odd. This tells us. This, this part tells us, right here, what we, what we conclude is that the product of two integers is odd. We are told that it's odd. What do we conclude from that? What do we surmise from that? What do we infer from that? If the product of two integers is odd, that implies that the two integers, that the two that the two integers must be odd. These two integers must be odd because odd, odd times odd, odd times odd, odd times odd is, you see, 3 times 5 is odd, which is what we are told, that this quantity is odd which means that n plus 1 is odd and n minus 1 is odd. If n plus 1 is odd, that means n must be even. If n, plus, n minus 1 is odd, if n, 1 less than that is odd, n minus 1 is odd, then n must be even. You see, we're arriving at the same conclusion. But this is a more, of a, more of a theoretical way. So it does do the job, either way. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement, they tell us that 3, 3n plus 4 is even. Well, if 3n plus 4 is even, if I have some number here, some number plus some even number is even, then this number in question here must be even also, because 2 plus 4 is even. The, the other way we can get even is 3 plus 1, r plus r, even plus even. Even plus even is even, or odd plus odd is even. But we don't have a luxury of considering this situation because this not this guy is even. If this guy is even, then that implies that 3n must also be must also be an even integer. One more time. If 3n plus 4 is even, then 3n must be even. If 3n is even, 3n is, 3n is made up of 3, which is, which is odd. Odd times some number is even. Odd times what will be even? Odd times odd, 3 times 5 is 15, is odd. Odd times even is even. So this guy must be even. Again, the second statement also leads us to the same conclusion that this n that we have is in fact even. Question is, is it even? Answer is yes. Again, if the answer turned out to be no, it's true, it still wouldn't have changed anything. We are able to say yes or no. So second statement also does the job by itself, and therefore the answer is D. That's it. That's all there is. That's all. I'm not going to start a second one here because I think I took a bit longer than I should have. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye.